Good morning, amazing second graders. We are going over Wednesday's work for this Wacky Wednesday. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. So today we are doing plot. This is our first one. Remember, beginning, middle, and end. If you remember in class, when I drew this little number on the board, we talked about what happened in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. So that is what plot is. <laughs> I am not gonna read through the example because it gives you the answers there. So I'm gonna skip right down to number one where it says Rachel's mom. Rachel's mom was a terrible cook. Rachel had to get rid of the food on her plate somehow. She did not want to hurt her mom's feelings. When her mom went into the kitchen for tea, Rachel got busy. She scooped the soggy mac and cheese into her jacket pockets. She gave her dog what she thought was a big chunk of chicken. She put the hard bread under her cap. The birds outside might like it, she thought. You were hungry, Rachel, her mom said as she entered the room and sat down. After Rachel's mother tasted the food, she said, This is awful, Rachel. How did you eat this? Rachel told her mom what she did and why she did it. Then she emptied her cap and jacket. Rachel's mother laughed and said, I will order pizza from now on. But from now on, you must promise to tell the truth about my cooking. What is the last thing that happens in the story? Rachel's mom tastes the pizza that she ordered. Rachel's mom tastes the meal that she made. Rachel's mother says that she will order pizza. Or Rachel's mother goes to the kitchen for tea. So we know that in the story, she did not taste the pizza that she ordered because she said she was going to. She didn't order it yet. We know that the mother goes to the kitchen for tea close to the beginning of the story. So that isn't what happened. So the very last thing that happened was that Rachel's mom says she will order pizza. So you should have marked C for your answer. The second story, The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits. Their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother under the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit, one morning you may go into the fields or down the lane. But don't go into Mrs. Mc Mr. McGregor's garden. Now run along. Don't get into trouble. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket of her and her umbrella. She went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of bread, of brown bread, and five raisin buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail were good bunnies. They went down the lane to gather blackberries. Peter was very naughty. He ran straight to Mrs. McGregor, Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans. Then he ate some radishes. Then he felt sick. He went to look for some parsley. What happens right after Peter squeezes under the gate? So the first thing we need to do is find where it says Peter squeezes under the gate. and squeezed under the gates. So the question says, what happens after? Mrs. Rabbit goes to the baker for bread. He eats some lettuce and French beans. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail go down the lane. Or he feels sick and goes to look for some parsley. Your answer should be first, he ate some lettuce and some French beans. That is what happens right after he squeezes under the gate, right here. And the third one. Marco and Paula were going to, with their mother to buy food for dinner. They got on the bus that stopped near their house and they rode all the way to the store. Their mother stopped Marco and Paula at the door, or at the door to the store. Now I want you two to get the bread, cheese, and milk for me, she told them. Make sure you work together. Marco and Paula smiled at each other. 
we can do that, Paula said. She and Marco picked out a basket for their food and walked together to the bread aisle. I like this one, said Marco. He held up a big loaf of bread. Paula put it in the basket. Next, they walked to the cheese aisle. This kind is my favorite, said Paula. Marco helped her put the cheese in their basket. Last, they walked to the milk aisle. Mother always buys this kind for us, said Marco. Paula nodded and helped Marco carry the heavy milk carton. They found their mother waiting at the door. I knew you two could do it, she said. What happens after Marco, Marco and Paula buy the food? So, we're gonna find that part after they buy the food. Paula nodded and helped Mar Marco carry the heavy milk carton. What happens right after that? Let's read the sentence together. They found their mother waiting at the door. Do you, find, do you see they find their mother at the door in one of these answers? You should find it on C. That's what happens right after they bought the food. <clears throat> Number four, Miss Kimball's surprise. Andy and his class had a plan. Principal Moss was helping them with the surprise. During recess, Principal Moss came out into the playground. He bought Andy and the rest of the class inside. Dur Principal Moss put flowers on Miss Kimball's desk. Andy went to his desk. He pulled out a card he had made. He put it in Miss Kimball's desk with the cards from everyone else. When Miss Kimball came in after recess, she was first surprised to see Principal Moss in the class, in the classroom already. Then she saw the flowers. She walked over to the desk and saw a pile of colorful cards. She read them a few and thanked her for being a good teacher. Finally, Miss Kimball spoke. She had tears in her eyes and the biggest smile. Thank you very much. You made my day. What is the first thing that Miss Kimball did in the story? So first we need to figure out where we see her name. Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum. They put flowers on Miss Kimball's desk. Does that talk about what she does? No. When Miss Kimball came in after recess, Ooh, there's the first time she does something. She was surprised to see Principal Moss in the class already in there. Doo -doo. All right. So, do, is it she walks to the desk to look at the flowers? She reads some of the cards that the class made. She walks into the classroom after lunch, or she sees Principal Moss in the classroom. Well, we know one that isn't true, and that's C. She walks into the classroom after lunch. Because in the sentence up here, it says she came in after recess. We also know that she doesn't walk into the desk, walks to the desk because that's after she came in. We also know that she doesn't read the cards to the class. So she sees Principal Moss in the classroom. When Miss Campbell came in after recess, she was at first surprised to see Principal Moss. So your answer should be D. And finally, special dinner. Maria and Tom Thomas were getting ready to cook dinner. It was a surprise for their parents. Maria pulled out the bag of pasta, tomato sauce, and spices. She was in charge of making spaghetti. First, she put the pasta in boiling water. Then she mixed the tomato sauce and spices together. Both pots were boiling away. Thomas was making the garlic bread. He cut the long loaf of bread down the middle. Then he smeared the bread with butter and garlic and cheese. Thomas slid the bread into the hot oven. Delicious smells filled the kitchen. Maria and Thomas set the table with plates, utensils, and glasses. Thomas put flowers in the middle of the table. Five minutes before their parents arrived home, Maria and Thomas finished the meal. Maria drained the pasta and added it to the sauce. Thomas removed the garlic bread in the oven and sliced it. They put the food on the table. When their parents got home, Maria and Thomas yelled, surprise! Maria and Thomas's parents were excited to eat the yummy meal. What happens right after Maria pulls out the food to make the spaghetti? What 
let's find that in the story. Maria, Maria pulled. What happens right after Maria pulls out the food? Does she put the pasta in the boiling water? Does she add spices to tomato sauce? Does Thomas put the garlic bread in the oven? Or does Thomas slice the bread down the middle? Let's continue reading after where we underlined to find our answer. She was in charge of making spaghetti. First, she put the pasta in the boiling water. There's our answer. You should have marked A for number five. Boo, boo, boo. Moving on to place value. Hundreds place, tens place, ones place. Easy peasy. So if you have the number for example, 672, you know that the six in the hundreds place represents 600. The seven in the tens place represents 70. And the two in the ones place just represents two. I'm gonna go down past all of these examples because you can read those on your own. Number one, which model shows 152? Oh goodness. We can cross off two right off the back. We can cross off A and we can cross off D. Now let's figure out which one has 152. Count these with me. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 92. Hmm, let's count the other one. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, Two. I think we found our answer. 152. You should have marked C. Which of the following numbers matches the table above? Let's count again. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26. Da da! Oops. There we go. Which of the following is equal to 800? Eight ones, eight tens, eight hundreds, or eight hundreds and eight tens? This one you know for a fact is eight hundreds. Number four. Look at the model below. What does the number, what does the model show? So we have 100, 200, 300. With those, I would also like you to label them because you know that your boxes are 100. This is kind of like the coins one we did before. We you know that each one of these is 10, and you know that each one of these little ones is one. So 100, 200, 300, 310, 320, 324. <clears throat> number five, which of the following is equal to the number 60 tens and five ones? You should have marked 65. If you need to draw that out, you can Oops, hold on. Go back, go back. All right, so you should have marked 605. Because if you have 60 tens, you know that 60 times 10 is 600. Ms. Nisley even read that one wrong. You know that if you have five ones, 
five times one equals five. Add those two together and you have 605. My handwriting is not that neat on the computer. <laughs> Pronouns. A pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun. Writers use pronouns to make their writing shorter and easier. So, like I, you, he, she, we, they, it, my, your, his, hers, it, myself, yourself, himself, all of these different pronouns. And we've already learned about reflexive pronouns, where it ends in self. So if I wanted to talk about I, I'm going to say myself. If I wanted to talk about you, I'm going to say yourself. Mom thinks you should be able to do math homework by yourself now. What is the pronoun in the sentence? Able, yourself, thinks, mom. Well, just like in the example we talked about, your answer should be yourself. Number two, my uncle not only let blank pet his new horse, he took me on a ride. Which pronoun is best in the blank? My uncle not only let it pet his new horse, let hers pet his new horse, let me pet, pet his new horse, or let we. Your answer should have been me. Number three, we have a hard time hearing Mr. Salas when he is speaking. What is a pronoun in the sentence? We, time, have, students. You should have marked we. And remember, if you don't know what any of these pronouns are, go back up to your examples and see if you can match any of those pronouns which, with the ones in the sentence. Number four, the raccoon was found in its burrow in the backyard. What is the pronoun in the sentence? Backyard, burrow, raccoon, or its? You should have marked its. Number five, Nisha bought all blank toys with blank own money. What pronouns should go in the blanks? You should have marked her and her. Nisha bought all her toys with her own money. And finally, representing data line plots. Oops, went a little too far. The tally chart shows how many buttons of each color are in a jar. Which bar graph matches the tally? So we know that there is one green, three oranges, and six blue. We have to find the one that says one green. Three oranges and six blue. Hmm, I don't know where your pink is on in this chart but we can just make it up and see which one makes the most sense. So first we have to look if all of them have one green. Yes, 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 and yes. Though they all have three oranges, this one does. This one goes up to four, so that can't be correct. This one goes up to four, so that can't be correct. And this one only goes up to three. Which blue has six blues? Does this one have six blues? Nope. So we know the only one process of elimination has to be Z. So you should have marked Z. If you would like to add a little extra step, go ahead and write pink here. And you are going to make your own tallies for pink. Pink has four. One, two, three, four. Number two, Maria is measuring the objects on her desk. The table shows the length of the five objects. Use the ruler to measure the pencil. You can write your answer right next to it. The pencil is six 
inches. And remember to have a period after. Which line plot correctly shows the lengths of all six objects? So, one of them is eight. We have two sevens and we have two sixes. Oh, three sixes. So, one eight, three sixes, one, two, three, and two sevens. X is the only one that shows one eight, so you should have marked line plot X. Number three, Emily is placing her, book sh her books on the bookshelf. Five books are five inches tall, five books are six inches tall, eight books are seven inches tall, two books are eight inches tall. Which line plot is correct? Let's start with the fives. You need five in five inches. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Oop, we know that one's not correct. One, two, three, four, five. Five books are six inches tall. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Those are all good. Eight books are seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa, too much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. It's supposed to be eight. So that one is wrong. Boop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Now two books are eight inches tall. One, two, one. So process of elimination tells us that W is the correct line plot. Number four, the coach wrote down how far each runner ran. Eight runners ran 100, six ran 200, four ran 300, three ran 400. So the first one should have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 eight. Those are all good. The next one has to have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> Whoop, that one's not correct. One, two, three, four, five. And if you keep going through all of this, you know at the end that line plot Z. So make sure you count all of those. Favorite subject. The table shows the results of the survey given to a few students about their favorite subject. Which picture graph matches the data above? Each picture represents one student. So three have to like math. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Four have to like science. We can see that this one is incorrect because it only has three. Three need to like history. We can tell this one's incorrect because that one has four. And two have to like reading. We can tell this one is incorrect because it has three. You should have marked Y. And recall information is the, where you have to stop for today. So I hope all of you got those correct. I will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.